You were never born, you will never die. You have never changed, you can never change. These words are from the ancient text, the Bhagavad Gita. I practiced that like 400 times. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita. The ancient history encyclopedia explains that the Bhagavad Gita, which means Song of the Lord, also called the Gita, probably because it's easier to pronounce, is an ancient spiritual text that laid the groundwork for Hinduism. It was written between 400, a, or 400 BC and 200 AD, and is one of the first written recordings of yoga. And yet, it is still practiced now. Today, I'm going to talk about the history of yoga and what it is, the many benefits of practicing yoga, and how anyone can do it. First, let's start with what yoga is and where it came from. According to Dr. Ramajayam, a PhD scholar in yoga at the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, the word yoga comes from a Sanskrit word that means to join or to unite. In this instance, it's talking about the connection between the mind and the body. Yoga is a series of intentional breathing, stretches, and strength building poses. In doing my research for this, I found that experts cannot agree on when yoga was first practiced. They just have to go by the first written words. According to Dr. Ramajayam, drawings and caves depicting yoga poses and items found at archeological excavations show that it could be before 3000 BC. There are pictures in caves of yoga poses and various items that they found. However, even if they can't agree when it began, they can agree that it began in India. How and why did yoga spread from India to the rest of the world? In his Huffington Post article, Philip Helmich discusses how yoga was intentionally spread to the rest of the world. In 1920, a group of Himalayan masters sent a man to, to Boston to discuss the science of religion. Until then, Westerners didn't even have words in their language to talk about the energy and consciousness aspect of yoga. And now, people have picked it up, and the reason that it's spreading, as Philip Helmich believes, mentions, sorry, that modern science is now affirming the physical and psychological benefits. It helps people to feel a life purpose and it carries over from your mat or practice into your real life. Now that we've learned about what yoga is, let's learn about the physical and mental benefits of what yoga does. The first thing is that you, <clears throat> the first thing to know is that you don't need to do yoga every single day. There are long-term benefits, there are immediate benefits. In fact, if everyone stands up and pushes their chair back, if you want to, thank you. And you, plant, oh, and you plant your feet, and roll your shoulders up to your ears, and then down your back. If you feel comfortable enough to close your eyes, just do two full deep breaths. Now when you sit down, yes, you all just did yoga, when you sit down, you, feel, you might feel slightly calmer or a little more energized at the same time. Um, that, um, <laughs> a little more energized at the same time. Sorry, that threw me off. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be way longer. According to the Yoga Alliance, yoga provides stress relief, reduced pain, it helps to enhance the body's relaxation response. It increases strength and flexibility. It helps with weight loss and maintenance. It also helps with your heart health and circulation. Uh, according to Gail Grossman in her book, Restorative Yoga for Life, she talks about the mental and physiological benefits, including establishing mindfulness or being in the moment, increasing patience, feeling happier overall, helping to still the mind, and decreasing anxiety for those neurodivergent folks. Now the question is, who can do yoga? 
Most people believe that you have to be a certain body size or have a certain body type or certain abilities in order to do yoga, but that's simply not the case. There are many modifications for pregnant women. Elderly people can do chair yoga. Anyone can do yoga. All you need are comfy clothes and a mat, and bare feet are best for your balance. You can attend a class at a studio, though sometimes that's cost prohibitive because it's eight to $16 a class. They have free classes, donation classes. You can go online through Amazon Prime or Netflix, or you, there are different places that do like a $10 a month um, where you have access to their library. Fitness Magazine, I have a handout for you all, has listed 11 poses for beginners. As you see, they might look a little tough, but they're not really hard to get into. These are just the pictures. Um, if you go online, you can see how to do the actual poses. In conclusion, yoga is an ancient practice that started in India and over time spread to the rest of the world. Practicing yoga has many different physical and mental benefits, some immediate and some long-term. Whether you are young or old, no matter what shape your body is or what shape your body is in, the truth is anyone can do yoga, which means you can too. And now, the speaker in me bows to the speaker in you. Namaste.